lecture 35. In this lecture, I will be discussing about two communication protocols, one is GSM and another is Bluetooth. So, this GSM, uh, the, this technology I will be discussing and how we can interface with standard boards and I will also discuss about Bluetooth technology and how we can interface with standard boards. So, GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communication. So, what is it? GSM is a digital mobile network that is widely used by mobile phone users. Okay. What it uses? It uses a variation of time division multiple access that is TDMA. So, GSM digitizes and compresses data, then it sends it over a channel with two other streams of user data, each in its own time slot. So, what does it mean? It means that it digitizes the data, compresses it and sends through a channel where two other data are also moving. So, they are sharing that channel. Okay, sharing a particular channel using time division multiple access. GSM along with other technologies is part of the evolution of this mobile telecommunication which include many other protocols as well like general packet radio service that is GPRS for sending the packet data. Enhanced data GSM environment that is EDGE and universal mobile telecommunication service that is UMTS. Okay. In our case, we have used GSM for transmitting SMS from the microcontroller to any other mobile device and to receive the SMS from any other mobile device to the GSM that is connected with the microcontroller. So, these are the two things that we have shown in the experiment, but other things can also be done. You can send a packet through GPRS. So, accordingly you have to uh, make your GSM work upon. So, you have to use that particular command to make or send the data through GPRS. This is basically the GSM system architecture. This MS is the mobile station, okay. it is the mobile station and uh, it consists of two components basically. One is the mobile equipment and another is subscriber identity module that is the SIM. Okay. So, this is the mobile station. BTS stands for base transceiver station. Okay. You see this is one per cell. So, this is one cell you have one BTS in this cell. You have another cell where you have one more BTS okay. and this is used and consists of high speed transmitter and receiver. So, this BTS has got high speed transceiver and receiver and it provides two channels, one for signaling for transfer of signaling data and other for data channel. Then we have base station controller BSC and you see that this BSC is connected with two BTS. Okay. So, this base station controller it controls multiple BTS you have one BTS here, one BTS here. So, which is controlled by this BSC you can see and it also performs radio resource management time and frequency synchronization signals to BTS. Okay. So, we have mobile station each of this has got one, one BTS in this cell and these BTS number of BTS which are in different different cells are connected with BSC that is base station controller. 
Next, uh, we see this MSC. Okay. So, this MSC is mobile switching center. Okay. MSC is mobile switching center. So, the switching node of a public land mobile network that is PLMN. Okay. So, this is basically the switching node of a public land mobile network and what it manages is manages allocation of radio resources like handoff and mobility of subscribers like location registration etcetera etcetera. And there can be several MSCs in this PLMN. Okay. So, you can have multiple such MSCs here in the public land mobile network. Then you have one GMSC which is gateway MSC. So, you this MSC is connected now with the gateway. Okay. So, you have a this gateway MSC which connects mobile network to a fixed network. Okay. And we often uh, say that uh, we are at home or we are at roaming. Okay. So, that is HLR which is home location register and another is visited location or visitor location this uh, register. Okay. So, these are the two important aspect of this GSM. So, for home location register this for all registered user it keeps what it keeps the user profile basically and this MSC is exchange information with this HLR. So, this MSC it exchanges information you see there is a connection with this HLR. And then this visitor location register it contains temporary information when you move let us say from location A which is your home location to location B which is the visitor location there we have this uh, visitor register. Okay. So, it keeps track of it contains temporary information about the mobile subscriber that are currently located in that MSC service area, but whose HLR are elsewhere that means the home is elsewhere, but it, it is now a visitor for the other location. Okay. So, it keeps that information in this uh, visitor location register. So, this is exactly what I have already discussed about mobile station, base transceiver station that is the BTS, the base station controller, mobile switching center, a gateway MSC that is gateway mobile switching center, home location register and visitor location register which I have already discussed. Now, this is an important thing what are the GSM identifiers. So, how a GSM is identified? So, it has got some unique uh, identity. The first one is international mobile subscriber identity which is called IMSI. This is a unique 15 digit assigned by the service provider. So, you are actually taking the service from some service provider. So, it is assigned by them including home country code. So, the home country code will be there. So, when you move to some other country and you use the same thing then that unique country code will be attached to it. Next was next one is international mobile station equipment identity. We have a heard of it that is IMEI number. Okay. So, this is an unique 15 digit assigned by the equipment manufacturer. So, when the manufacturer manufactures that particular device it gives a unique number to it that is called IMEI number. Then there could be a temporary mobile subscriber identity which is a 32 bit number which is assigned when you move to some other location by VLR to uniquely identify a mobile station within a VLRs region. So, this will also uh, keep track of how many people from other region is moving here. So, they give this 32 bit number to, the, to those uh, mobile number, mobiles that are moving there. 
Now, this 80 commands are used for to set up this GSM module. So, the GSM modem that we will be using, we use 80 commands, which we have also used in our code when we show you next. So, 80 commands are used to control the modems generally and these commands with GSM or GPRS modem can be used to access the following information and services. What are the following information? Information and configuration pertaining to modem and SIM card. What is the information? I mean what kind of SIM card we are using about other configuration regarding the modem etcetera. SMS service. MMS service, fax service and of course, data and voice link over mobile network. So, it provides all these services. In our case, we have used SMS service. You can also use GPRS service uh, for sending packets as well, but in our case, we will show you how we can use SMS service. This is SIM 900A GPS GPRS uh, modem. So, you see that whatever is the chip, this is for the chip area and this is the 900, SIM 900. So, this SIM 900 is the same and the board might be different. So, as I have already told you in the previous lecture that SIM 900A is a quad band GPS GPRS engine which works on these frequency 850 megahertz, 900 megahertz. 1800 megahertz and 1900 megahertz and it can be directly interfaced to the serial port of the PC. You can directly connect it to the serial port of the PC. The baud rate can be configured from 9600 to 115200 that also we can do through 80 commands. Now, the connection is fairly straight straightforward. The digital pins uh, RXD and TXD that is the receiver and transmitter connected to the digital port lines. We will see that how we have connected. So, you have to make certain pins as transmitter and receiver okay, in your board that will be connected to the GSM board transmitter and receiver. An external power supply through an adapter generally we have given. And of course, plus 5 volt and ground pins for other circuits, it is required. This is how the connection goes. This is the Arduino Uno board. This is the 5 pin volt which is connected to the GSM 5 pin, uh, GSM 5 volt. And this is uh, for the ground which is connected to the ground of the GSM and the receiver of this GSM must be connected to the transmitter of this pin and the transmitter of this pin must be connected with the receiver of this Arduino pin. So, we must understand this particular thing that whenever I say that Here, this, this will send some data, it will receive some data. This will send some data and it will receive that data. Okay. So, one way communication will be this to this, one way communication will be this to this. So, accordingly, the Tx pin of this particular Arduino board must be connected to the Rx pin of this SIM module and the Rx pin of Arduino must be connected with the Tx pin of this particular module. So, we need to make sure that we are done with this proper connection. This is the typical interface that I am talking about. Next, I will talk about uh, Bluetooth. We all might have used Bluetooth in our mobile phones for transferring some, uh, let us say, photos or any data. Okay. So, let me very briefly talk about Bluetooth. This is a standard for short range wireless communication for mobile phones, computers, 
headphones, speakers and other electronic devices. These days you must have seen that you have wireless mouse and wireless keyboard. Okay? The communication between the PC and the device is done through Bluetooth communication. Okay? That is how they communicate with each other. So, it uses 2.4 gigahertz frequency for communication. This is the frequency that you use for the communication and the typical range is basically this uh, typical range is basically this uh, 100 meter range it has sorry 10 meter range it has got ok. This is what is given that is 10 meter. So, the range uh, for communication is not huge. So, in previous GSM module we were saying that we, we were using a SIM module that was sending the data through SMS. Okay. So, if uh, internet connection is there then you can send the message to any place any mobile number that range is not limited. But here you see that it is limited by 10 meter, only 10 meter devices could communicate with each other. So, the typical data transfer rates are for Bluetooth 2.0 is up to 4 Mbps and for Bluetooth 3.0 it is 24 Mbps. There are some recent version also exist. So, Arduino compatible Bluetooth are also there and of course, STM uh, compatible. Bluetooth module could be compatible with uh, any board, you must connect it in that fashion and you must use the correct command for using it. So, you need to set certain things, certain uh, uh, baud rate you have to set and accordingly you can use it. So, the example could be HC05 Bluetooth module or HC06 Bluetooth module. Let us see this HC06 Bluetooth module. This is the Bluetooth module that we have also used it in our experiment. Okay. So, it has got this is uh, 5 volt must be connected, this is must be connected with ground and this is the TX and this is the RX. Okay. It is a class 2 Bluetooth module with serial data interface that can be used as either master or slave. Uh, basically, uh, so this the these are some technical specification which I have already discussed uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency plus 3.3 volt DC power supply and the speed of around 3 Mbps uh, max and in slave mode uh, the default baud rate is 9600. So, when we do the programming we will show you how to make connection uh, with this particular Bluetooth module along with STM or with Arduino. So, this is the typical Arduino interface if you see where BCC is connected with the BCC 5 volt ground is connected. Tx is connected with pin 2 which will be the Rx uh, and Rx is connected with pin 3 which must be the Tx. Okay. So, this is the typical connection. So, this is all about uh, some of the communication protocols that are there and these are the protocols that we will be using it in the coming experiments. Thank you.